exhaust note, it's not a 2GR, but I gotta say, the more we push this thing, the more power it starts making, the better it starts sounding. Right here, check it out. 235 horsepower and 186 foot-pounds of torque to the ground. Seems like we've been there before, but today's exercise was seeing if we could get there with reduced cost. So if you're interested in hearing the details, stick around. So what is this build? This build here is, it's a 2AR FXE, so straight out of a Camry hybrid. Um, that ends up giving it a 12 and a half to one compression bottom end with a really long intake cam. In this particular one, I've also taken a second one of those intake cams and I've put it in the exhaust position. But unlike the previous time I did that, um, you can see here, it only has one VVTi solenoid. This is because I went ahead and last time we did this with dual VVTi, I looked at where all the tuning data ended up being. And it turns out that exhaust cam ends up just staying for almost the entire RPM band at 20 degrees advance from the installed position. There's a tiny bit in the bottom end where it does go a little bit beyond that. And of course to idle, if you're closer to zero, then it just idles better. But overall, almost the entire power band 20 degrees advanced. So what I did, I went ahead and kept the FXC stuff, which has a fixed exhaust cam gear. And I simply took the VVTi intake and I put the exhaust cam gear on here. And you can see here, I spent a bunch of time building it. There's no real reason to go back over that again. The only critical thing is I installed that ex fixed exhaust cam gear. I took the factory timing mark and I went counterclockwise 11 teeth and I put another mark right there and the intake side was timed at the factory position. Now that factory timing mark actually has a couple implications. Um, the first thing is it's just simpler, right? It's one thing, less thing to remember. But again, when I tuned it, I noticed that I only ended up using 25 degrees of advance on the intake cam. Well, these phases are actually capable of 55 degrees. Um, so I could actually, I could handle retarding the intake cam by another 20 degrees, put it back in the exact same position that it is in the Camry hybrid. And what that means is these timing teeth right here that the factory ECU uses to tell if the cam is at the correct position are now back at the correct position. So this particular build and on the dyno, it's, it's using the Haltech ECU right now. But in theory, since that cam is at the correct position now, we can use the factory ECU. So we can now cut about $1,000 off of the install price um, just because of, we can drop the aftermarket ECU um, and we can drop all the custom wiring. The wiring instructions I have for this car, for this particular swap, only requires moving seven wires. That's, it really doesn't get simpler than that as far as engine swaps go. Whereas aftermarket ECU, you're gonna be touching every single wire. Uh, and that's, I think it's about 110 wires or so. But either way, we've gotten rid of the dual VVTi cam carrier, as well as the valve cover. And instead, what I did is I put the aftermarket intake that I had used. That aftermarket intake is the one that allowed our 270 wheel horsepower build to that one. That's how it gained that 240 to 270 is with that intake. Uh, this is a fabricated version of that, but essentially it's got these fairly stubby, big fat runners. Now, unfortunately, what the dyno showed me yesterday, here, if we take both the previous FXC and this FXC attempt, you can see the previous attempt might make a couple peak horsepower less, but you can see the previous one is the one you want. But thankfully, um, we know that everywhere where that is, is, is exactly where, where the exhaust cam is sitting. It doesn't matter that it's fixed. It's sitting exactly where it was tuned on the other one. So we know the problem is we're not, we're not moving enough air through these big ports to get enough mass movement, to get enough velocity so that it squeezes more air as the valve is closing. So essentially we're not making enough power for this to add power. Um, it's weird, but it's, it's the way it works. You need enough port velocity for this stuff to work. That means at this point, I've got some more developments to do because I'm pretty sure I can make a stock ECU tune that'll work with this. I'm pretty sure I can go back from 186 foot pounds back to the 205 foot pounds of torque. Um, that would be wonderful to get that. And we're at a reduced cost. Now, 
one of the things it doesn't solve is, is part of the demand for this is because there's a lot of people overseas that don't get the 2ARFE, but they too get the 2ARFXE. Um, but now we're going to be back to using the 2ARFE intake. So that is one part that does have to be sourced internationally. Uh, now, thankfully, the intake is a part that is available on eBay all day long. And the way that eBay works these days, they'll actually handle the international shipping. They do freight forwarding all automatically. So even if you're overseas, you should still be able to get one of the 2ARFE intakes. They're relatively cost effective. Of course, that's until after I say this and now they're going <laughs> to they're gonna all get sold and the price is going to go up. But hey, I'm doing my best. So I'll work on the ECU tune for now. I'll give you guys an update when I have it. But for now, I do want to set these lower power 2AR builds aside. Um, I do have to build a really high horsepower. My goal is still to hit 350 wheel horsepower with one of these 2ARs, naturally aspirated, of course. And I really, uh, I, I need to get back to the 2GR development. So, so a 2GR build might be the next video. All right, have a good one. Oh, and really? There's almost 10,000 of you guys now. <laughs> Thanks for all the subscriptions, man. I, I really appreciate it.